Zero Pucks Given in partnership with the Hockey Art Co. with Manscaped Male Grooming Products and on the Sports Social Podcast Network. Absolutely delighted to welcome Chieftain's Chief Puck Stopper, Jordan Lorde. How you doing this evening, mate? No, I'm good, thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. You are very welcome. Coming to us live from the beautiful Isle of Wight. And yeah. not starting out a new uh, Isle of Wight Raiders over there, though. Unfortunately <laughs> not, no. Although it was one of my favourite rinks to play in. <laughs> But you say you're having a little bit of a bit of family time this week. So obviously we've got an incredibly busy couple of weeks coming up with uh, the sort of postseason of the Britain division. Um, but we just had a four point weekend with the Chieftains. You had a, a night off Sunday, as we were just saying, sitting in one of the colder rinks. Yeah. To sit in and not play. But Saturday you had a bit of a family affair going on when we played Oxford, and your brother managed to score past you. That's the first time he has ever scored. On me in Is a it game. Really? So, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if you were watching the game or not, but it went in. So I got the puck out of the goal and shot it back at him. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was not there this week. Actually, the Saturday games can be a bit of a pain in the bum for me. But oh, okay. It's um. I've sorted it out for next week though, considering we swapped the fixture around. Oh, nice. But um, yeah. So was that? Like you say, it's the first time he's ever scored on you. Is that? Has the banter been back and forth since then? It's more so the fact that this weekend I'm the one driving him to the game in Chelmsford. So I said, one, if he scores again, he's staying in Chelmsford. And two, if he's going to score, it's at least got to be off the ice. It's got to be a good goal. It can't be like the last one. No. <laughs> well, I mean, that is something actually that, I mean, I know we all spoke to a couple of the guys last year because they were all coming from sort of like down that area. It was like Dan yeah. Fay, Casey Wilson, and, and with Mark Saunders, who was the coach at the time. We're all sort of coming up together. But obviously, if you guys living close to each other, you're playing against each other and travelling to the game together. That's a... Uh, that's incredible. Yeah, it, it makes it makes sense. We I think we've we're doing something on Friday, obviously for all the, the the young kids for Easter and stuff. So I think he's staying down near us. So it makes sense for me to just take him in and bring him back, depending on the result, obviously yeah. whether he comes back or not. <laughs> but it's your obviously your first season at Chelmsford. Um, how have you found it? How's how's the year gone for you? Honest opinion is the most fun I've ever had playing. It's it doesn't feel like you have to. I don't want to say you feels that you have to go in and perform because you do, but it doesn't feel like if you don't perform, you're gone. Like pretty much every other place I've been on, if you don't perform or if you have a night off, which does happen to everyone, then you don't sit and watch the next 10 games. It's it's one of those places where it is very much family first kind of environment. And I found that out firsthand this year, obviously with everything that happened with my son. It's Hockey is the main part, but they care about you first as people before yeah. you are a hockey player. Yeah, no, that's that's really good to hear because we, we, we have heard on this podcast and on other platforms this year, particularly with imports as well, people pl- saying that playing, you know, around these sorts of times has actually made them fall out of love with the game because it's it's been a little bit sort of too much. But we've seen a lot of players similar position to you sort of come down from the National League. Is it? I mean, that level of commitment up there is just unreal, isn't it, with the travelling? That's, that's the thing I... I don't want to be on a bus to Leeds, Hull, Solway on a Sunday night, especially expecting mm. Oakley to be born. It wasn't something I was I was going to kind of put Lucy through, and it's it on myself as well. I can hardly get any sleep as it is. Imagine having to to do that journey and and things like that. So obviously, when I knew Cliff signed, I spoke to Cliff straight away as soon as they announced him. I spoke. I always speak to Cliff. I get on well with him. Obviously, I've played with him at Thunder, I played with him at Conference, MK, everything. So I I checked in with him and spoke to him pretty recent um, into the announcement. And I just said, I was like, it would be something I've been looking to do. Yeah. And I mean, at the time as well, I mean, the Chieftains were without any goalies because uh, uh, Petr Cech had gone to Oxford, Luke Tassadri had moved up to, to yeah. Witness Wild uh, and Leeds Knights. Um, and Sonny Phillips had stayed at Romford. So we, yeah, we were without any. But I mean, between, between yourself and Dominic Ray, you two seem to have that that bond that is vital between netminders. That obviously you're you're the number one. Dom's aware of that. He knows his role. But when he plays, he plays to put you under some pressure. Dom is a very very good goalie, and the the thing that's different about Dom is that he wants to learn. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. And he like I don't know. Obviously, most people won't see it, but whenever Dom plays after each period, we'll come off and he'll speak to me and we'll go over the goals. And he's like, "What can I do different? What can I do here?" We'll go over it. And the main thing I always say to him is just have fun. Who cares? At the end of the day, yes, we want to win, but it's a game. That's what people need to remember. It's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy what you do. Otherwise, there's no point doing it. 
No, which is, when, when you put the time and effort in that you guys have to put in, you have to enjoy it. Exactly. And you'll see me on the ice. I don't take, I take it serious, but I'll flick snow around. I'll just hide pucks. I'll just, you just got to have fun with it. Is Otherwise you just get too much in your own head and you end up playing bad. Yeah. How, so have you found it this year as a, as a first time dad? How have you found that? It's, it's honestly a lot better kind of ability than I was expecting. Obviously, I'm not saying that it's a, a low league. It's not by any means. I just never ended up playing in it. I think I just went from thunder to lightning just because that was the next kind of step for me. Um, the only thing different I would say is just system wise, system wise and speed a little bit. So like in national league, the, some of those passes would connect straight away. Then the shots come off the systems. Everyone's set up the power players, penalty kills. Everyone has certain systems as opposed to obviously when you play some teams here, it's kind of, just play, get the puck out, get the puck in. It's hard to read, but obviously you get used to it after a little bit. Yeah. And how have you found it as being a being a dad for the first time and, and playing? Oh, I love it. I honestly would not change it for the world. And the one of the things that did it for me was obviously, I'm not sure many people were really aware, but it, was, it wasn't an easy kind of thing to go through because obviously – there was a lot of stuff. I went straight into intensive care for a week and things like that. So it wasn't an easy birth. And um, it was the fact that we had the whole team behind us. It's like everyone messaging, sending cards, sending obviously flowers, outfits, everything, just saying like, when you're ready to come back, come back. And it's nice to be able to now bring him to the games with the jersey on and have him watch. Like obviously where Lucy sits with him up top behind the net when you're mm -hmm. stood for the national anthem you just see his little head up there with her and so it's nice it is really nice yeah I, I, I do remember her being still coming to games incredibly pregnant very, yeah, very yeah she's not, she was never going to miss nah. it she was always going to be there <laughs> so, and you've got um, I want to talk, talk about your mask because your mask gained quite a little bit of traction when you you changed it sort of halfway through the season and, and went for the full yeah. chief headdress but you've got Oakley on the uh, on the reverse of it haven't you yeah that, what, what yeah, made you so go for the, the full headdress? I just thought it was cool. I want to say I thought it was really cool. I know Corey Crawford used to do something similar at Chicago. And I was umming and ahhing because I kind of, Chieftains, I could have tried to do like a spin off of the movie Slapshot and done the, the Charlestown Chiefs and try and do something like that. But the colors weren't there. Yeah. So I like the feather thing. And I have to tell, I have to say it was Lucy's idea to get the sparkly gold on there from Fleury. So she saw him have it in Vegas. She was like, you've got to do it. So I was like, yeah, fine. Why not? And then on the back, there's um, like a little teepee with smoke and everything. And what that is, is um, when I got engaged to Lucy, it was in Lapland. So obviously that was kind of the whole scenery and everything. Oh, wow. and his name was in the smoke and stuff like that. Is that like the uh, Aurora Borealis, Northern Lights yeah. in the top of it? Yeah, so we, we saw the Northern Lights and things like that, which was definitely an experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that they say someone, everyone should do once in their life is get be able to see the Northern Lights. No, absolutely. I think we've we've been to Lapman, I think, four times now. And um, we've only ever seen them one of the times out of the four. I know people go every year and they still never seen them. Wow, yeah. So it's not a, not a thing that doesn't happen every night, does it? So it's not like... No, uh, exactly. Not like seeing the moon come out down here, which... Um... No, definitely not. <laughs> That's good, great. So your junior career then sort of started at, in Basingstoke and that was the last sort of club you were at before you come to Chieftains. I mean, as a, as a Basingstoke lad, what do you know? Do you know anything about the Bison? Is there a time scale as to when they come back? I honest, I don't know when they're coming back or if they're coming back. Um, all I, I know that there's plans to have the work on the rink done. I don't know if it started or if it's done. I don't, I don't know anything about that, but it is quite. It is sad to see the rink in the state it's in, obviously, because that's where I learned to play. That's where mm. I played all my juniors, and over the years, it just got worse and worse and worse. Like when I started, they were saying the rink's getting refurbished. And obviously, that was how many years ago. So, everyone says next year for the last fifteen years. Yeah, so I was. Hopefully... I was down there the other day. I didn't go in there, but I was. I was working quite close, and because uh, it's on a, like a fantastic little like leisure park. There's loads to do yeah. around there. It's actually like from the outside, you wouldn't know that it was sort of dilapidated inside like it is. No, you go inside and everything's fallen over. Yeah, it's such a shame. Um, I mean, obviously from a Chieftains fan's point of view, we don't want them to come back just yet. We want to we want to keep you keep you in chance for as long as we can. <laughs> so, but how uh, so? How was your sort of your junior career and your start at Basingstoke? Because um, we discussed obviously your brother Matt is a little bit older than you. Yeah, did he start before you? 
So yes, yeah, so the the only way I got into hockey was because Matt went on a school trip and it, he went skating. He got into hockey, and I used to just take my sleeping bag and my my He Man person and just sleep in the back of the stands. And one day, I guess I just watched, and I ended up being a player. And I always wanted to be a goalie, but everyone told me you have to be a player first because you've got to learn to skate. I was like, okay, fine. So I was a forward for I think a couple of years at Basingstoke. Then I went to Bratnell and was a forward. Um, and then I started just jumping behind the goalie with player kit on as a forward. So although I'm in the wrong position, I've got the wrong equipment on. So my mum and dad were like, you may as well just go and goal. <laughs> so uh, luckily I got to go and goal. Um, and I just didn't look back, really enjoyed it. I think the equipment was what done it. You can have custom pads, you can have custom helmet. You just look different, like a transformer. Yeah. Well, and it's quite rare, actually, for, for a hockey team's goalie to have a different jersey to the rest yeah. of the team. But you got to experience that at Christmas this year, didn't you? That was that was a new one, especially when I put it on. And I, I, I said to some of the boys, I, was like, I think I could have this as my bed sheet. It was huge. I had to tie like three knots in it and tuck it <laughs> in and everything. But the good thing is if I lift my arms up, nothing would sneak under because there's jersey everywhere. Yeah, just covering the whole goal with it. Yeah, but that was that was cool. That was yeah. a good experience. Oh, I I've got uh, you might see it up in the back corner up there. I've got Luca Tassadri's jersey yeah. from a charity game a couple of years ago, and out of the frame that covers an entire two seater sofa. Yeah, everyone says to me they're like, "Why do you? Why is your jersey so big?" And I'm like, "Well, the length doesn't really make a difference for me because I'm not a tall person. I'm tiny, so the length of the jersey I don't care about. It's just my arms and my shoulders. I want to be able to move my arms. Otherwise, I feel like I've just got a spray painted jersey on." Well, you need that. Obviously, you've got all the padding for one, but you need that flexibility, don't you? Yeah. For, for exactly. getting down and moving that. Are you um, when I spoke to Luca before, actually, he he said it's everyone's different about what hand they go glove, what hand they go stick. Yeah. Nothing to do with what handedness they are. Yeah. No, it's everyone is kind of each to their own. It's more common for someone to catch with their left and use the block in their right hand. Um. Obviously, you get goalies do it the other way around, like Petr checks the other way around just because that's what he likes. Um, everyone's just so different. Yeah. And for, so for your career, you say you went to Bayes and Stoke, Bracknell, and you mentioned you had a bit of time at MK with Cliff. Um, you also had a couple of little spells at Cardiff Devils up in the Elite League. What was that yeah. like? It was a very good experience. I think I was there for three seasons, I think. It was when I was with Cardiff Fire. I there, Bouncy got hurt, and then they asked me to come for one practice, and then I ended up being there for three years. Um it was it's one of those ones where you it opens your eyes a little bit so you see the two hour gym sessions in the morning you see then the two hour skate you get to go to the chl to sweden switzerland austria things like that even though i'm not playing you're very much a part of the team so i was there kind of just basically helping with the kit guy to be honest because i was training and everything and then obviously if you're not dressing for the game you can hang the jerseys up sort the sweats and everything out do skates and then you can sit there with a beer whilst everyone plays it was brilliant <laughs> That's that's levels, isn't it? That's like yeah. you can really see the difference in the levels there. It was it was a very good experience, especially going to to Bern in Switzerland. Obviously, they got I think it was like eighteen thousand seat arena. That was that was cool. I think we took them to overtime as well. Yeah, so that must that must be brilliant memories and experience for you. But the elite prospects burns me every now and again. But it's got you doing a little bit of AAA college hockey in America as well. Yeah, so I went from Basingstoke Buffalo. Uh, and I then signed for Sioux Indians uh, U18 AAA, uh, which played out of Lake Superior State University in Michigan, in Sault Ste. Marie. And that was a very, very good experience for me, purely because every game was like a playoff game. Mm. We were playing teams like Little Caesars, Honey Bear, like all those kind of teams. They're very, very well-known teams for like midget major. And um, for me to go over there, I was obviously the only English person in the league. And I think I finished like third in save percentage for like import import goalies yeah. as such. But it was more kind of like the lifestyle. Like you go into school with the team, like it's like Mighty Ducks, like your English class is all your team. Yeah. Like it was it was very, very different for me. And it was also minus thirty five degrees. So I was yeah. yeah, I was freezing. But going on holiday in Lapland all the time, it's obviously you don't mind that drop in temperature. Yeah, it is it is quite nice to be honest. But the one <laughs> thing I didn't like was it, I get up I like my sleep, which Oakley has taken from me at the moment. Yeah. When I was away, I would uh, I'd get up, shower, be late to school, and obviously if you don't dry your hair, you run to the car. By the time you get to the car, your hair's frozen. Yeah. So I think every day I missed first hour just trying to warm my head up under the hand dryer so my hair didn't snap off. 
Well, that uh, that temperature it is it is different, isn't it? Between Northern Europe, if it's minus twenty in Northern Europe compared to minus twenty in Northern America, that feels completely different. Yeah, here in Lapland, it's it's crisp. It's just like cold. It's not it doesn't like hurt as such. But out there, it's windy, mm. and that was the problem. It was windy and snowing. It's my goalie partner Aiden. He uh, we had some old beaten up Honda CRV with no heating. So we just run to the car and just huddle in and just try and get to score as quick as we could. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to see something like that hopefully in a, in the Britain division next year in in another one of your old haunts in Cardiff. Um, that uh, Trevor Hendricks is starting the yeah. the Cardiff Canucks out there where they're hopefully going to have this all going to school together in the morning uh, in the afternoon on the ice all morning. Um, I what, what, if you were sort of back, you know, eighteen nineteen. Would that really appeal to you to sort of do your school in that way and play a lot of hockey? It would all really depend on what I say, what I would want to do then. I had no idea what I wanted to do at that age. Um, it's kind of similar to OHA, what yeah. they did oh, quite a while ago, but obviously it's not because it's now senior hockey. But he's he's doing everything the right way, uh, what it seems like. like He's got the training facility that he's got set up with the synthetic ice. He's doing those kind of sessions. He's got the school then, obviously. I don't know what age he's looking at, but if he can get a university with Cardiff Uni and things like that for the older players, then he'd be laughing. Players would come from all over to try and get their their degrees as well as playing, which is why like Cardiff and Sheffield and players places get such good players because they want their degree at the same time because they yeah. know it doesn't last forever. Yeah, no, it's just, um, so it's such a hardcore sport that if you play for a long time, especially if you finish, you know your body might feel a. Uh feel a bit broken have you have yeah. you had any crazy injuries then by getting in the way of these 100 mile an hour flying rubber discs uh i don't think so i mean i had I had a concussion that i was out for about three months for in about in milton Keynes. um i think it was benny no it wasn't benny ross it was ross green uh he was on there was a breakaway and he was um back checking and he slid and as he went to get up his knee came through my head Oof. and i was out for a little while um last year a uh, slap shot went through my cage. So the goal of the cat eye cage, if it goes through at the, the right speed and the right angle, it can go through. Yeah. So it went through and hit me in the forehead. I looked like a guy at the Goonies for a little while. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Lucy picked me up, took me to the hospital, and she was like, look out the window. She was like, I can't look at you. And I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> but um, no, I played the played the next day away against Bratnell as well. I had my eyes shut. And Ashley Tate was my coach at times. Like, how are you feeling? I was like, I feel all right. I can't see, but I feel all right. Yeah. He's like, all right, you're starting. I was like, great. <laughs> Five goals later, I got taken out. I was oh, like, what, really? do you, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> they were all coming down the one side, were they, as well? Well, there was a few back door, and I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even know those guys on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I've also got you down as having um, your sort of your goaltending academy. Yep. What, uh, what sort of got you into starting that? Because obviously you're quite young still to be... Uh doing all that sort of stuff yourself when you've got a full-time job and a baby and all that so when covid started i was looking for obviously not somewhere to skate it was more so how to keep going and i found the company glyce which do synthetic ice mm. and i contacted them and ended up getting three sheets from them so i could just skate in the garden and the way my coaching started was i i kind of felt bad that i could do that but other people couldn't Mm. I didn't like the fact that I could carry on and there's people sat there not being able to do anything. And it it does have quite like a negative effect on the way they think and things of the thing they love gets taken away from them. They can't do it for however long. So I started kind of like virtual coaching. So I'd be in, in the garden, on the glyce, on FaceTime. And this is to people all around the world. I think we did like 15 countries. Wow. And it would basically be them sending things that they need to improve. I would go over it on the glass with my equipment on and they can then watch ask questions like analyze the video and things like that and that's how it started and then end up building a barn because we lived we lived on a farm so i built a barn out back with my dad um got more glass goal in and everything like that and then people could come and do one-to-one -one. and then a year later we moved to a bigger barn um more glass again and got boards and everything so we can like rim the park stop the pipe behind the net um I think we, so far, I think I had over like 300 goalies come down. Um, people have flown from other countries to come skate. Like it's, it's been really, really good. It, I, I get more joy from seeing me help someone than if I was to make a save. Like if I was to make a really nice save, 
I would get more joy if I told somebody how to do something and then go and do it. Yeah. So it's, it's not, I like coaching a lot because it's, it's the kind of the relationship you get with the goalies as well. Like my goalie coach, my whole life was Nathan Craze. And to this day, I've had NHL goalie coaches, college goalie coaches, and he has been the best goalie coach I've ever had. Hands down. He is spot on. So any goalies listening, if you, I honestly really, really recommend him. He's living out in Montreal at the minute, but he will always reply on messages. He is by far the best, whether it's life coaching. I've called him when I'm in New Jersey in a beach house with a team that's got five goalies. I'm like, what do I do? He's like, and then we just go through it for two hours on the phone and things like that. He's he's very, very good at what he does. I wouldn't be here without him, that's for sure. No, oh, that's well, that's brilliant. What would you say then if you were to say, Top three things. You've got a young kid now, it's a goalie. What's the top three things that they really need to, to work on as a goalie? Skating. That's obviously the main one. Everyone says you've got to be the best skater and you laugh it off. I did. That's for sure. I laughed it off. And then I remember my my first Southwest conference trials, I started falling over all over the place. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, you have to be able to skate. Makes sense. <laughs> so skating, uh, mentality is a big one. You can't really let, other teams know that you're annoyed. You just have to just kind of have a poker face as such. Obviously, you can be annoyed sometimes, but like smashing your stick and things like that, just try and control your emotions a little bit. Um, and then just have fun. Have fun's the main one. If you don't have fun, you won't play. No. You, you'll just quit. I see it all the time. People, they get pushed and pushed and pushed to be better and be better and they just lose the love of the game. I, I did, for sure. I wasn't so much being pushed. I just lost the love of the game and then I wanted to quit. And then I ended up playing for Sheffield Steel Dogs in the COVID Cup. And then it just relit the spark. And then from then I just carried on. Mm. I hear that from a few people actually that that playing in that in the in them COVID Cups kind of reignited the love of the game for them. It's it's because it wasn't serious. It was like a summer league. Mm. It's you just go out, you have fun, you're with people like I think our team, we had Kirky, Ben Lake, um, Davy Phillips. Ben O'Connor, like it was a stupid, it was a stupid team. It was, there was no way that team wasn't winning. Yeah. But I think, cause you say, cause we've had that kind of period where no one was able to do anything. And then when these COVID cups came around, the players have all said, yeah, it reignited the love. But yeah. then I think when the game came back for the fans, I think the fans came back even stronger. Yeah. Cause they missed it so much. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And it, it going back to Chelmsford, I think it's, it's nice having a fan base that's so behind the team, but it's not one of those, like if you have a bad game, they're not all on everything saying, oh, this is terrible, this needs to happen. It's it's the opposite. They're like, oh, come on, guy, like continue. Like It's nice having a positive fan base, which we definitely, Chams are probably the best fans I've ever been a part of. And I think I said that at some point this year, I said it's the best fan base I've had, I've ever played for. Yeah, I think in your program, uh, interview, I think that you, you did mention that it's um. I mean, it, it is great this year for that. It wasn't quite the case last year, to be perfectly honest. But it's um, yeah, that certainly has improved this year. No, that's but the good. um, the other thing I will have to talk to you about is golf. Oh God, here we go. So you're a scratch professional PGA level golfer. I'm actually very average at golf. I just put that in my bio on Instagram <laughs> because I thought it was funny one night with Jay King. <laughs> <laughs> and I've left it in there because I bought some expensive golf clubs and I thought I have to have it in there if I have these golf clubs. But I think I started I started last off season. So I've only been playing like a year, but I think I am a 13 handicap at the moment. Which that's not bad it, for a year. Yeah, that's what people keep saying. It's not too bad. Obviously, sometimes I hit the ball and it will run along the ground and go in the water or go in the car park. But other times I hit the ball okay. But um, I got some got some getting better to do if i'm going to play against cam grant ollie those guys because i i think they're pretty good so you you fooled a lot of people including myself then with that bio thing because uh when you when you first sort of joined the chieftains my first comment was well that's going to make the golf day really interesting i know i saw that i didn't have the heart to say anything because i thought <laughs> it's going to be even funnier when i get there and i'm not actually that good <laughs> so we're still we're still doing i think we still have a chieftains golf day and you'll see me slice the ball into the bushes yeah i think because well, I, I think oh. damon thought you were on the wind up when when you said that you weren't uh you'd not been playing that long and you weren't that good uh, yeah so we played uh towards the start of the year and i think he, i don't know how long he's played but i think he beat me up by like two or three shots or something and he didn't believe that i'd only played for that um like a few months at that point 
Yeah, I, I think he's quite a tasty golfer. I think he's been a. He's pretty, yeah, he's pretty decent. I go, I go with Kinger quite a lot because Kinger lives five, ten minutes from me. So yeah. I'll always message him like golf and he'll be like, yeah, sure. So I just pick him up on the way. Yeah. There's, no, there's nothing like having a uh, a time consuming hobby, is there? Ice no. hockey and golf. Yeah, exactly. But now with Oakley, I've had to invest in the baby caddy. So I attach it to the pram. I can put my golf clubs onto the pram so I can push him around whilst playing. This is excellent. This is the best way to sort of jewel up your responsibilities. Yeah. Lucy comes as well. She comes because she just likes to walk around. So oh, it's, really? Yeah. We just go just because where we play, it's like a nine hole course, but we just play it twice. Yeah. But it's, um, it's quite relaxed. So you can just walk around and just enjoy it. Yeah. But my wife's always under the impression that golf spoils a good walk. Oh, no, there's no, there's no point walking if you're not getting the ball. <laughs> exactly. <What's> the point? <laughs> I, I've got a, I'm on a, a golf weekend coming up in April, and when it, it was sort of, they put us all in, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah I'm doing it, and then I looked at the dates, and I was like, shit, I don't even know when the playoffs are, <laughs> and then when I found out, and it's fallen the week before, so I've got the playoffs finals that week, and then the golf weekend the weekend after. Oh, that'd be good though. Yeah, oh, it will be fantastic. But well, I'm not going to see my wife for two weeks, but it's. Uh... <laughs> oh, you're going to be in trouble. I'm always in trouble, Jordan. That's yeah. the that's the secret <laughs> to it. So we've had a few questions come in on the uh, the Instagram and the Facebook posts, and uh, some good ones actually. I've got some good ones from uh, from Wayne Box, who's the equipment manager at Slough Jets. Yep. Uh, he wants to know which players do you think have the best or most effective shot in our division? Uh, Stano. Stano's got a good release because majority of the time he's not actually looking where he's shooting. He's he's got enough experience to to shoot the puck and actually get it where he wants to without picking the corner. Um, who else? Obviously, you've got Cameron Grant that take a million slap shots a game, but the slap shots that actually hit the net are pretty hard shots. So yeah. they've, they've got a good shot. Um, it's hard to go through... Not so much release, but one person that's actually really, really good at something quite small is um, Ziggy Beasley in Streatham. If you put the puck on net, he will tip it anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere that puck is, he'll tip it. And it's it's really hard to stop if someone keeps tipping the puck because you're not you're not expecting it. But no. I think probably one of the hardest shots is Stano purely because I don't think some of the times he doesn't know where he's going, so you've got to try and figure out what he's doing. Yeah, he... um. I do remember him scoring a goal actually in uh, I think it was the home game against Invicta where we won in overtime. Yeah, high blocker sort of... where the post met the crossbar. Yeah. yeah, incredible shot. I couldn't believe yeah, it, was... it had gone in. And I made a point on that one too to step outside my post to give him even less room and he still got it in. So I was I said fair play, it was, it was a good goal. Yeah, we do, we do miss Stano at Chelmsford, that's for sure. But uh, Wayne also wants to know how fussy you are about your equipment because you said it earlier, obviously, you were. Uh, you know, a fan of all the sort of the goalie, the goalie stuff. Yeah. And I have seen some incredible pads you had when you were at MK. Yeah, yeah, those are, I, fussy. I'm probably one of the least fussiest goalies you'll you'll meet. I think, like I got skates this year. I'm still trying to get them sorted out and baked, but I went with white skates because I thought they were ugly. So I thought it was funny. <laughs> so I've got custom white skates, which I've got um, pads. I am fussy with like I got the yellow set this year, yellow set of pads and gloves for Chelmsford, but I just clicked the wrong box when I did the customizer and forgot to add the quick slide on the inside. So sliding on them wasn't as what I was used to at that point. So I thought I better not change it during the season. So it's mm. fine at the start of the year, but halfway through it's kind of something I wouldn't change. Um, everything else is just normal. I'd, a lot of people say they don't like new equipment. I'll just, I'll have new equipment whenever really. It doesn't really bother me. No, so a lot of people like to wear it in, don't they, rather than have it. Yeah. No, I prefer I prefer new stuff. It's, it's nicer, it's more like technical glitch sorted, and we'll get back to uh to the questions. A f what I'm sure is probably a former teammate at the very least, a um a friend and possibly a conference player with you as well. Ryan Watt. <laughs> what he wants to know. Here we go. Do I get to the question very quickly? Da, da, da. Technology is not my friend, as you can probably tell from what's going on this evening. Tadley kebabs or grills? That's a tough one. <laughs> that is a tough one. I've known Ryan since I was like eight years old. Me and Ryan are like brothers. So he knows how much a kebab means to me. Um, 
I'm gonna have to go with grills because they also have Oreo milkshake, and so you have yeah. you have to be able to have that as well. Oh, that's quite good. I'm um, Oreo milkshake. That's that, that might tip me down the road. That one. <laughs> I'm normally a peanut butter guy when it comes to milkshake, but um. Oh no, the Oreo one's good. Not as good as TGI's, but it's good. <laughs> Right then, we've got uh, Jack Flower, who's been doing some incredible uh, audio-visual stuff with Slough Jets. He wants to know, who's the best goaltender of all time? Of all time? Um, it's probably not a popular opinion. I like Fleury, to be honest with you, and Lucy likes Fleury as well. But yeah. it's more so the fact that you watch him play, he just has fun. He rubs the post, says thank you to the crossbar and things like that. He just enjoys it. And... The fact that he's still going and he's still making those saves and he's still playing as well as he is, I think he'll go down as one of the best. Yeah. Nice. I've got a couple of questions here from Keeley, who is a Chancellor Chieftains fan. Uh, She wants to know if you hear the crowd shout in your name and and do you enjoy that sort of thing? Uh, I do sometimes hear them. Uh, It all depends on what if it's obviously quite a close game, like one goal game where I'm quite dialed in. Obviously, if it's not, as close or we're losing or we're winning, then I hear him a little bit more because I'm not as focused. Mm. Um, but it is nice. It is it's nice to hear, obviously. Um, some of the chants are funny, like not funny, but I like the the black and gold one because especially in Invicta on the weekend, they try to announce their team and we could hear was our fans. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was one of the best things I've seen. They couldn't hear a single word. I thought it was great. So, yeah, she also wants to know who's your best mate on the team? Uh, I'd probably say Kinger because I've known King however long we can we we play golf we go like last year went to Prague things like that I I get on with King really well and yeah. I've been a chauffeur for the last three years as well and now he's finally pulled his finger out and got his driving license <laughs> so he's gonna have to drive me around a little while yeah he's gonna absolutely have to pay that debt back definitely uh Ben Mazza who's a, a Chelmsford fan uh wants to know who is the best golfer on the team the best golfer yeah oh I'd probably say Dan Fay, purely because Dan Fay still has a wooden golf club in his golf bag. <laughs> like just for, as a rescue? Or? Is more so as a, a relic. So he brings it and everyone has a go with it. And it's it's quite impressive, the fact that people can hit a golf ball with it, to be honest. It's like a three wood. It's just a wooden head on it. Wow. And I think it's I think it's brilliant. I, I wanted to buy one, to be honest with you. So I think Fazer wins it just for that. But I think if we're going to do ability... I think it comes down between thing one and thing two. So either Cam or Grant. I just don't know. I just don't know which one's better because I haven't played. No, no, they're um, I've, from from what other people have said on the you know when the Chieftains go out and play golf, them two are the one. They're the ones to beat. Yeah, they're probably also the ones that dodge the golf ball when they're trying to hit it at you as well and messing around. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and your your Canadian teammate Damon Porter, he wants to know who your favorite wrestler is. Nacho Libre, but the the skinny guy on Nacho Libre that isn't actually very good. He's my favorite. <laughs> do you uh, do you like your wrestling or a sort of like American? No, it's, yeah, that sports. was more of a. I don't think I've ever seen wrestling. I think I've seen that movie once, but it was more he showed me that movie just because he thought it was my kind of sense of humor, which it yeah. was. <laughs> so it's a it's a funny Jack Black movie. Oh, I think anything with Jack Black in is worth watching. Yeah, I just I think he's brilliant, especially that he just doesn't care. No, for quite a few years ago, when I, when I still had hair, um, and and I was a little bit bigger than I am now, I changed my uh, I think it was MySpace. This is how long ago it was. I changed my MySpace profile picture to Jack Black, and nobody realised. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Which I'm sure is more of a compliment to me than it is to him. No, oh, you yeah, you that's a good net worth right there. I would have kept it as Jack yeah. Black. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I think he he got really big and I got really bald, so we uh, <laughs> <laughs> we separated on those things. But anyway, Jordan Lorday, thank you so much for joining me this evening, mate. It's been a real pleasure to sort of uh, get to know you a little bit better. Obviously, we've we've been quite good with chatting throughout the season and seeing how you're getting on at Chelmsford. Um, we, I have got one final question there that's come from Harriet, who's a Chelmsford fan. She just wants to know if you're staying or can't you say yet? I can't say yet, purely because. I honestly don't know. It all yeah. really depends on home life and things like that. But um, I like where I am. And if I was to play hockey next year, it would be at Chelmsford. But I don't know what my plans are. Yeah, I'm sure the cogs are already turning in Cliff's head. 
So we're um, as Ian announced last week, he was staying. Um, Cliff will be on here next week as well, so we'll try and get a few names out of him when he's on. Yeah, here. I'll ask some questions as well. That'll yeah. be fun. Let's, <laughs> let's see him squirm a little bit. I tell you, if I put that thing out asking for questions, I'm expecting that all the boys is going to be like bang, 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 bang. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a few different fake accounts as well and get some more on there. Yeah, you wouldn't be the first that's done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Anyway, mate, thank you so much. Good luck for the for the postseason. We've got obviously a cracking uh, little quarter final coming up against Oxford. And then hopefully up to uh, to Ali Pally, where the playoffs certainly missed Chelmsford last year. So it's um, they've got to be there this year. Yeah, no, I, I hope so. Thank you for having me. Really enjoyed it. You're very welcome, mate. All the best to you and your lovely little family. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. Cheers, mate. Hey guys, it's Ben from Zero Pucks Given. We've had our sponsorship with Manscaped. It's extended by one month. So you've got one more month to get your 20% off and free shipping on all of Manscaped products from manscaped.com. As you can see from this before picture, I know I look like someone who used to be in good shape. I'm a little bit of a, a little bit of a gorilla. I'm quite a hairy guy. So I took the Lawnmower 5.0 into the shower and then with the interchangeable head, you take the long hair off with the with the clipper head you flick it off for the razor head and then you take the short hair off and considering how hairy i am this is the outcome i think that's pretty darn good of course once of there it looked like a bit of a plucked chicken and you kind of go all the way down use the skin safe razor blade uh, the clipper blade and that downstairs to get all of that cleared off and then when you're done you use the crop suver and the crop preserver which is like a like a deodorant for your balls uh, stops any of that sweating, any of that chafing, if you're sort of uh, driving a lot, sitting in a van all day or something like that, uh, or even if you're being active, going to the gym or training or anything uh, anything fitness-wise, it stops from all of that rubbing and chafing, particularly when you wear the Manscaped boxers that are also in the picture, as they've got a nice sort of silk pouch at the front, which keeps you all feeling nice and fresh. So then after that, I've used the, uh, the Weed Whacker to get all the hairs around from uh, up my nostrils and in my ears, which as you get older, trust me, they all start to appear out of nowhere. Uh, and then I've used my uh, moisturisers with a little bit of uh, bulldog stuff, actually, to just on, on my head after I've shaved that with a razor blade. You can get a Manscaped beard trimmer as well, which is um, it's something I'm definitely going to look at. It's got a lot of different attachments on it, so you can sort of do the lines in your beard and sort of skin fade it down, which is a really, really good product. I'm hoping I might get hold of one of them quite soon. So, yeah, I think these products are absolutely brilliant. I do not put my name to anything that I don't like. And as you can see, I use them. And I think they're great. So use the po use the code zero pucks twenty, manscaped.com. <laughs>